Action. How now, brown cow? What? Hey, friend, and welcome to a video of ours. <laughs> Hey friend, in this video, I'm gonna be taking it back to the basics, you guys. We're doing a watercolor basics tutorial all on wet and wet painting. So this is one of the main techniques within watercolor. There's wet and wet painting, there's wet and dry, um, and those are the two major techniques that you'll use when you're painting in watercolor. And you'll use them whether you're painting loose florals or realistic florals, whether you're painting landscapes or portraits. Anything that you'll paint with watercolor, wet and wet technique is a huge foundational exercise and something that you'll be using within any type of painting, any subject matter, etc. So I'm really excited to dive into this kind of technical tutorial. So if you're ready, let's do this. All right, so wet and wet is my favorite thing about watercolor. It's magical, it's how you blend colors, it's how you softly dif diffuse colors. And in this tutorial, I've broken it down into three simple techniques within wet and wet painting. So we're gonna go over pushing, pulling, and poking, the three Ps of wet and wet. Wet and wet is by far my most favorite thing about watercolor because it's where the magic happens. And so um, you are gonna have so much fun if you're brand new to watercolor or if you're more intermediate or advanced, this is a really fun exercise to do. And it's something that you have to do to develop that muscle memory and to really understand how watercolor works. So to get started, I have all my supplies out here. If you don't know what supplies I use or you don't have any supplies and you need to look for new supplies or buy some supplies, make sure you check out our supplies video. And I also have all of the supplies that I use personally linked below in the description. So make sure you check that out. But I'm going to be using for this entire video just my size 16 Princeton Heritage 4050 round brush. Um, so round brushes are my favorite. I talk about that all in my brush supply video. Brown brushes are my favorite and I'll just be using my size 16. And then I'll also be using my cold press paper from Legion Paper, this is Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press. And the reasons why I use cold press paper versus hot press, etc., are all in that video on the paper that I use, the supply video on paper. So make sure you check that out. So let's get started with wet and wet painting and how it works. I'm gonna start with the pulling method. So I'm gonna open my block of paper up and I'm actually going to be painting horizontal. Doesn't really matter, but I wanna go long ways with the three different techniques. So I'm gonna start with a couple different colors to show you how pulling using wet and wet works. All right, so to get started, I'm gonna load my size 16 brush up with a lot of water and I always make sure I swipe the brush off on the edge of the jar a few times before going to my paper. And then I'm gonna load up, it doesn't matter what color you use, I highly recommend using professional level watercolor um, because with student level paint, you're not gonna get the same blending effect and the same um, uh, ability to use wet and wet painting as you would with professional level. The pigments are just more strong and they're easier to blend with, easier to use wet and wet with. So I'm loading up with a ton of Prussian blue on my size 16 brush. Um, I wanna get this color really, really thick and dark, just so you can see the contrast when I'm pulling the watercolor. All right, so this is the pulling method. I'm just gonna start with the belly of my brush really close to the paper. So I've got about a 35 or less degree angle away from the paper with my brush. I'm not pointing it straight up and down like this. This is a vertical hold. So I've got a slanted hold and I'm literally just going to bring my brush across like this. As you can see, as, my, as I move my brush across, that pigment is really easy to push around. That means it's good and wet, um, which is crucial for wet and wet. We need to have pigment that is wet and able to, in order to work with it. So then I'm just going to smash my brush uh, um, in my water cup to release all of the pigment. And then with just water on my brush, I'm going to go right up on the edge of this stroke and pull it down. And you'll see this blue blend into this water because it's wet. 
So the more I pull this down, I'm gonna grab some more water, the more that blue will kind of drag or diffuse. This is a nice way of showing a gradient. I can grab more Prussian blue if I want to, to make it kind of, to push it more into this water. <clears throat> You can also um, help it out by moving your paper upwards like this and letting it bleed. But this pulling method within wet and wet is really great for shading. If you're doing realistic florals or a portrait where you're showing you're painting more realistically, this is how you would shade from uh, your shadow colors to your midtones to your highlights. And then my next method within wet and wet is going to be pushing. So we're essentially going to do the same thing, but we're going to push color into it instead of pulling it. So I'm going to start with the same color, Prussian blue, and a lot of it. And same slanted hold, I'm gonna go down just a little bit more instead of just one stroke across, I'm gonna do a couple. Making sure that the edge of this blue color is really wet, otherwise it will not blend, it will not move. Uh, this is wet and wet, it has to be really, you know, movable and wet. <clears throat> so then I'm gonna release the pigment off my brush entirely, so I'm gonna get rid of all of that blue paint in my water cup. At this point, a lot of more type A people, nothing wrong with it, uh, become really insecure or unsure of not basically not wanting to waste the paint that was on their brush. And I just wanna reassure you that it's very minimal and it's going to be okay. So now I'm gonna grab a completely different color. I'm going to pick up Lemon Yellow Deep. This is yellow, I just use it a lot. And so it's kind of green. So I'm gonna add water to it and pull off some of that green and put it on my paper towel. So we're gonna have a little yellow green as my secondary color. Yellow is a really strong pigment. This is Lemon Yellow Deep. It's a really strong pigment, so it should push into the blue instead of vice versa. So I'm gonna start away from the blue Grab a little more. I'm gonna start away from the blue and work my way towards it. The reason why I'm not going from this blue edge and then working backwards is because it'll just drag the blue into the yellow and I want it to burst or blend. I don't want to drag. So I'm gonna just barely touch it and let the colors do its thing. I can help it burst a little bit more, or blend a little bit more by doing this kind of poking situation where I'm scooping some more of this yellow green into, into the blue. But as I said, the yellow, Lemon Yellow Deep is a really strong pigment, so it should burst into the blue instead of vice versa. But some colors, it just depends on the, the pigment strength. Um, it'll go the opposite way. So this is how you would, in watercolor, using wet and wet, this, this is how you would blend two different colors on your actual painting. So you can obviously use your mixing wells to blend two different colors, um, but this provides a really unique texture and a fun burst of color. Um, and that's what's so magical about watercolor. So you could do it again with, you know, opera rose or a pink color, maybe a little pink and red. So you could do the same thing, but with warm colors, again, making sure this edge is really nice and wet, getting rid of all that pigment in my water cup, and then grabbing some yellow. I have a yellow on my warm side of my palette so that I'm not grabbing this yellow green color. I'm grabbing my more warm yellow. So that keeps it more clean for you type A's. Grab in my yellow. And then starting away from where I want it to blend and working my way up towards it. 
You want to make sure that the consistency of your water and pigment mixture is kind of like milk or cream. You don't want it to be too dry and you don't want it to become just a huge heavy pet puddle of water and pigment. So anything that's like kind of puddling is going to create um, like a spider web texture when it dries. So you want to get that right consistency, but just know that it takes a lot of practice to get there. And again, that yellow is stronger than the red pink hue. So it's going to burst into that and create a nice gradient of yellow to yellow orange and then to reddish pink. All right, and then the last method that I use with wet and wet painting is called poking. We did pulling, pushing, and now poking. So poking is really fun if you're um, painting loose or realistically. I, If you haven't watched the anemone tutorial, I did poking a lot in that tutorial. Um, to help darken the base of uh, petals. Um, so poking is great to use in both loose and realistic style, any type of subject you're painting um, to provide a little bit of more like darkness in a certain area, more shadows or more color in a specific area. And so to show you poking, I'm just grabbing water on my brush and I'm creating a swatch. Doesn't matter what size or shape, I'm just showing you how it works with water as my first layer. Then I'm going to grab a lot of Prussian blue on my brush to show you some poking. So this one I'm going to use a vertical hold because I want to show you some bursts as like little circles. And so I'm going to use a vertical hold and I have a lot of wet pigment on my brush. And then I'm just going to, in specific areas, drop my brush in. If I want a burst to go kind of, it looks like a firework. And if I want it to be larger, then I'll just stay on that same area and keep poking it. And that will help it grow. Sometimes your water will be too thick. It'll be more like a puddle and it'll act like a wall. It'll block the color from bursting. So you need to find that right balance between just enough water and um, not too much water and not too little water. Because if you have too little water as your base layer, it's gonna be too dry and you won't see this bursting happen. But if you have too much, it'll kind of block the burst um, and act as a wall. Kind of looks like a blue Dalmatian. But check out the anemone tutorial where I showed you how to do this poking method on a floral. Um, we can also, you know, mix in some yellow just to see how that interacts. It's fun to see other colors interacting and bouncing the pigments around. Okay, and there you have it. The three methods that I use for painting in wet and wet with watercolor. Wet and wet is so much fun. So don't stop with just practicing these different types of swatches and these methods. Um, be aware of how you're using wet and wet painting in anything that you paint, whether it's a flower, some leaves, landscapes, abstracts, whatever it is, wet and wet wet is huge for showing smooth blends between colors and showing depth with one color from shadows to mid-tones to highlights. So wet and wet, it may take some practice if you're brand new to it. And as an intermediate or more advanced watercolorist, um, you may want to explore some new colors and see how different pigments are stronger than others, etc. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know in the comments below what you liked about this tutorial and maybe what your biggest struggles might be when it comes to wet and wet. I would love to help you out in the comment section. Section Again, make sure you subscribed and you like this video. That helps us a ton in knowing what content resonates with you and what to put out next. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video.